2013 meeting of the City of Santa Barbara's Finance Committee. We'll now come to order. Mr. Samario, what do you have to say? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. So as you well are well aware of, um, we are today, this afternoon, submitting to the full council the fiscal year 2014 and 15, the two-year financial plan. And this really kicks off the entire budget review process for the public and council, and it'll occur over the next two months. Um, concurrent with that, we come to the Finance Committee with uh, several items that are probably more detailed than what the Council is going to look at, um, and we present those to the Finance Committee over the next month and a half or so. And so this is the time where I just wanted to show you what we're proposing to, to present to you over the next two, several weeks, but also to ask, is there anything else that you would like to see um, that's really in addition to what you'll be seeing at Council? Council, as you know, we're going to today provide an overview, but essentially their presentations will be each department coming in, spending an hour or two talking about their budgets, depending on how big they are, and going through all the components, their operating budgets, capital, fees, and the like, position changes. Um, so you hear a lot of detail there. So the things you might want to add would be things in addition to that where you want to focus on a particular area or topic. So if you look on the screen, you can see that what we're planning um, starting on April 30th um, is we're going to look at, as we always do, the non-departmental revenues and the general fund. Those are taxes primarily and our assumptions for growth in the next two years. We'll see an updated multi-year forecast, which you've seen before, but we wanted to show you the latest version of that. So how are things looking, you know, longer term? And then the following week, we would get into the departmental pro uh, proposed fee changes. So this is just general fund first. So community development, public works, parks and recreation, police, fire and library are all proposing fee changes. And so we'll present those. And that's followed the following week by the enterprise funds who also have proposed fee changes. So we'll cover all those enterprise funds on that date of, of May 14th. And that's really kind of wraps it up. The only thing we'll should probably go through on, on May 21st is a review of the citywide reserve balances. We, we do that every year. This was a big topic of discussion two years ago where we actually resulted in some changes to reserve policies, but we spent a lot of time on that. We wanted to show you where we're at with those, not just the general fund, but citywide. I think, I know particularly um, Council Member White was always interested about water, wastewater fund reserves, how they're, how they're doing. And then you can see that we have provided for any follow-up on items that you've requested information throughout the process that you wanted to come back to and us, for us to provide to you. And then we also come to you with what are called staff recommended adjustments. Um, once the budget is filed or in, in today, there are always things that occur between then, I mean, to, today and in the next few weeks for technical things or just adjustments we think need to be made, whether updates to revenue estimates. So we'll bring any of those to you for your um, review and approval. And then lastly, we'll just look for some final direction from you um, based on what you've, you've um, reviewed so far. So that's the plan. I uh, wanted to get your approval of that, but then to see if there's anything else you wanted to have covered, as I said, in more detail and sort of separate from what we cover at Council. Okay. Fellow committee members, comments? Mr. White? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I have mentioned to Mr. Armstrong um, in, in the past, and I think with you uh, to a lesser extent, uh, Mr. Samario, three areas which are financial in nature, but um, and I think that it's as much, it's, it's a reminder to the council, and it's also presenting the picture, which this is one of those windows that the citizens have into city workings mm -hmm. of just watching these hearings, who, who has the courage and patience to take these on. But three pieces that are important parts of our discussions uh, are uh, overall city debt, um, the pension situation, where we just where we stand in that. I, I mean, I feel like these are sort of these are our cutting edge elements, and even if they just get a uh, a snapshot, I feel like this may help over time, council and its decision making work as well as citizens seeing how these difficulties are going. So, so debt. Um, retirement and the infrastructure shortfall that or, or situation and again y y you folks have been compiling this information and delivering it to us but it often is in a separate context rather than in the picture which this is our this is a, a, a picture of the city's uh, health and so forth and so on so I, I would appreciate snapshots somewhere along the line um, 
to just basically bring everybody up to speed on, on our the most current thinking on that. Um, Mr. Chair and Mr. Uh, Committee Member White, if I could follow up just to make sure I'm clear, are you, is it for the most part information we've already sort of talked about and presented in different contexts, but you want to sort of repeat exactly. it in this context? Okay. Exactly. And I'd, be, I'd be interested to hear, Mr. Chair, what others think of that or how sure. that would fit in. Um, I'm I'm fine with the with the calendar. That looks that looks good to me. Um, I also would be interested in some CalPERS information, and specifically, what I'm interested in, and I imagine Mr. White as well, is we we have recently received from CalPERS mm -hmm. updates about what they expect the increases in the employer uh, rates to be over mm -hmm. the next five years or over a five-year period. Right. Um, <clears throat> And I would like to see an analysis of how that's going to impact the budget. For instance, maybe comparing projected revenue growth over that period so we have an idea of how much of whatever revenue increase we're hoping for is going to go sure. to pension increases. Yeah, I mean, I think we could put together, you know, the, the same sort of template that we use for a multi-year forecast just sort of carried out with some just very generic assumptions about revenue growth overall, you know, and then plug in um, with the PERS rates because we have a, a payroll model that can allow us to make those kinds of projections so we can look at what they are today and what, what they would be starting in fiscal year 16 when they're planning on starting this five-year implementation of a 50 percent increase so we can, I think we can do that. Okay, that would be great. Um, and I also am interested in, in some more details about our infrastructure uh, backlog, but one thing I would like to know specifically is um, and I don't know how how easy it would be to do this, but I'm curious if there was a point historically where we were caught up. Was there a time in the city's history when we were more or less even, when there wasn't any deferred maintenance? So I'd, I'd like to understand. I know that this problem has been around for a while, but if there were if there was a way to quantify just how long, and maybe it was a much smaller problem at some time, and it's much larger now, but some way of quantifying that over time would be interesting. Um, and then lastly, uh, one thing that we uh, talked about at council recently was the idea of attempting to find a way to put the what the city contributes from the general fund towards social services to try to put that in the context of the overall budget discussion rather than being a, a standalone item. So any thoughts from staff on how we might restructure that discussion so that the social services pool is considered at the same time we consider the rest of the budget? And I realize that there are some timing difficulties there concerning when the HUD money comes in that we're matching and that we don't want to do two separate reviews of applications from mm -hmm. social service providers. So I realize there's, there's problems there, but any... Any advice from staff on how we might do that sure. would be great. And I think part of the issue is, or at least the timing is, when these um, agencies who receive the money, they need to know in advance so they can sure. plan because they have the same fiscal year as we of do course. for the most part. So July 1, if we wait till the adopt adoption right. of budget in June, it's kind of hard for them to plan. So how do we work that out? Exactly. And that's what I have to say about that. Okay. <laughs> Is anything else? Um, thank you. Thank Ms. you, Mr. Rios. Chair. So to follow up on what um, Chair Francisco was just saying, if if we were to change when we look at the human services money, if if there was more to give, would that be helpful if we did it? So we'd have to do it a whole year in advance, right? So that the the, re the recipients could plan for their finances. I mean... Yeah, it they, would be nice to give a little more money to that if we had it. Yeah, I, um, Committee Member Kurt Murillo, I think we would probably have to look at something more a little earlier on. Um, I think we just went through that process recently. We're allocating the, those fundings, which, of course, preceded the budget discussion we're going about to get into. But, hmm. again, I think largely we do that in order to give them time to plan rather than waiting until June. So we might have to be doing something a year in advance. I have to give it some more thought, but thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Onward. 
Well, that's all we have today. Oh, okay. That's it. Very I good. Know, short meeting, so we'll, well see you this afternoon. I, I regret to say this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>